shape um, or shape and paddle. Majority uh, is over at Mount Benson area, uh, halfway between Kingston and Road. Um, it's just under 2,800 hectares, uh, predominantly merino. Oh, I'll get that next slide. So fifth generation farm, sorry. Um, so yeah, I've got two brothers that one's involved in the farm a bit, and the other one's just finished his apprenticeship. So he's not sure what he's going to do yet, but. Uh, 650 mil annual rainfall, um, and a third of our country is low-lying grey flats, which is yeah heavy grey clay country, which gets um, really wet in the winter time. Um, so we don't land too many ewes out there. It's just uh, dry, dry sheep and cattle out there, and the other two thirds is higher sandy ground. So um, yeah, red sand country and just some grey sand over the limestone. With the clay base. Um, we've got 6,000 merino breeding ewes and 2,100 mated merino lambs, a merino ewe lamb, sorry, and 400 short horn cows. Uh, we've got a bit of center pivot irrigation as well, which is mostly for grazing, um, lucerne and coxfoot uh, pastures uh, for finishing stock, and 40 hectares with least to a potato grower each year. Uh, our love lines have been on Glendamar multi-purpose merinos for 18 years now. Um, they're a plain bodied, wrinkle free merino, so very easy care. Um, 18 to 20 micron ewes. Um, not massive ewes, they don't like massive ewes. Um, so the, the shear is like the shear, 65 to 70 kilo ewes and uh, yeah, 150 percent landing average. Um, our focus is really on high fat and high muscle and early growth. So all, all the rams we buy have got ASBVs and we wouldn't buy a ram which, that doesn't have ASBVs. So yeah, the fat and high muscle is important for new fertility and uh, lamb survival. And uh, the ability to cope with tough times and they don't need as much suck feed over summer. Um, and uh, yeah, staple length and clean fleece weights, obviously important. Um, staple length's probably just as important as fleece weight because we shear six monthly. And, um, and uh, yeah, so 70, 70 mils plus every six months. Um, so that's important. Uh, we joined in on the 15th of January to land in mid-June. Um, we've gone out a little bit later now because we're shearing in May. we moved that out later to um, so we're not shearing really having heavily pregnant ewes. Um, preg scan for models, sell all the dries. Uh, allocate more feed to the twins, uh, obviously, and uh, we land our mobs of twins in around 100 ewes per paddock. And the singles are in 150 to 400 plus, uh, sometimes higher. Our twin lamb survival in the last three years have averaged 80% and singles 93% uh, with 0.8% uh, year mortality from joining the market. Um, we haven't mules for 12 years now. Uh, that's a result of breeding for no wrinkle and, uh, and free growing white wool which is really open and, and quick, quick to dry. And, uh, so yeah, we haven't jetted our sheep for over 35 years or that hasn't. Um, so yeah, really low labour, um, uh, less chemical use, so that's all good. Um, yeah, and we're, starting, we're really starting to get real premiums for our wool now, um, they're chasing non-mules wool, um, yeah, 50 cents plus, greasy, um, probably more than that now, I think. Um, so yeah, we're authentic, authentico and sustainable accredited, so they're non-mules quality assurance programs through um, wool buyers. And we're in the process of becoming responsible wool standard accredited, which is the, the, the highest uh, quality assurance program in the world. And uh, yeah, we haven't been audited yet, but it's, we're hoping to become audited, uh, to become accredited, sorry. And uh, yeah, we're supplying water a 
clothing label called Devold in Norway, and we're one of 15 in Australia supplying them with non mules wool. Um, so that's an exciting uh, aspect. Uh, we started six months shearing in 2015, so uh, that was a result of getting discounts for overgrown wool at 120 mils plus. We were shearing in 12 months and getting discounted, and our wool broker told us uh, we should think about six months shearing. So we've done it and haven't looked back, and we probably we won't go back to it to, to, to a 12 month shearing. Uh, we've increased our uh, tensile strength from 50, uh, 25 to 55 to 60 plus, and we don't we haven't had a tender fleece for the whole time we've been doing shearing, six months shearing. Uh, we cut 60 to 70 mils every six months, probably down around the 60 mils in the autumn shearing and 70 mils in the spring. Um, our micron blows out a bit in the spring because they're on the green feed for the six months, so we, the more the 20, 20 to 21 micron in spring and uh, back to 18, 19 in the autumn. Uh, our ewes cut about three kilos every six months and uh, yeah, we're obviously better, better meeting the market specifications for length and, and strength, so we're really chasing that sort of wall now. Um, yeah, we've, we've increased our wall uh, fleece wall amount and we don't have as many skirtings, um, so which is a bonus. Uh, we only crutch about 10%, which is mostly in the spring. Um, we don't get, we don't have too many dirty in autumn, so we put, put an extra rouse about on to get the get the stain and the dags out and things. So um, that's a lab, labour saving thing, so we don't have to spend a month crutching sort of thing. Um, yeah, and easy to manage, and we can't really measure it, but we hope use find shelter when they land a few weeks after they're shorn. So. Um, we think they do. Uh, our lamp survival is increasing each year, which is good. Uh, we sell half our store weather lambs in the spring um, off shears to on auctions plus to um, other producers to finish, and the other 50% we can keep on pivots and and uh, sell on the hooks at over 18 kilos. Um, Probably the reason we sell half for store lambs is because we make a big portion of our Merino ewe lambs at eight months old, so we're focusing on putting weight on them and getting hopefully getting a lamb out of them. So we generally mark about 50% to 60% lambs that we that we make um, from our ewe lambs, and we've been doing that for the last two years, and we're doing it again this year. Um, and yeah, we've we have quite a big off shears sale in the spring um, to sell our surplus one and a halves and five and a halves because we're getting quite a few young ones coming through we have to turn them out the other end so we're getting quite a young flock now. Uh, yeah the EID side now um, we started tagging our ewe lambs in 2016 so for three years this will be our fourth year. Um, we're not tagging our weather lambs yet because we're just uh, Trying to we're starting to capture data on our our ewes first, and um, saving a bit of the cost in buying the tags for the weather lambs. But um, we use Shearwell tags and and the basic stick reader for basic re recording that we sometimes do um, the stick reader. And uh, True Test XR5000 uh, uh, weigh scale head, and uh, we we're using Jonathan England. I think I saw him here today. Uh, to manage our data, so he's been helpful and we'll, we'll keep using him, I think. So, uh, yeah, we, we haven't gone right head first into the collecting side of things, but we, uh, we've been collecting birth type, um, so whether the lamb's born as a single or twin um, at marking and preg scanning data, so our scanner. Our scanner, Jeff, Jeff Southall, is set up with um, all EID now, so it makes it pretty, pretty simple and and not much of a hassle at scanning. Just to we don't really do anything different. So he's got the true test panel um, weigh head in his tent, 
and the and the panel reader, so it's pretty simple. We just have a few teething issues. It's only been set up for a couple of years with it. Um, we occasionally get two which jump in the crate, and then they both read, so it's a bit of a hassle getting the other one out. And then deleting the previous recording, so but he's fixing that problem this year. He's got a new automatic shut-off gate in the lead-up, so only one can enter the crate at a time now. Um, yeah, he just emails, a, emails the um, Excel spreadsheet to us that night, and it's on the email straight away, so that's good. Um, yeah, recording birth type, so we just mark the lambs with a chrono chronological tag order, so um, we start at tag one and we start on all the twins or the singles and do all the singles first and then drop that down in, a, in the notebook or whatever and, and then do the twins, so it's pretty simple, easy collection, you don't have to... The first year we didn't do that and we had to go down the race with a stick reader and do every single one and, and it took you know, a few days to do, so that was a, a, a good, good idea to yeah, just mark chronologically and then you've got that data. So. Um, yeah, this is our three-way three -way auto draft that we've had for a, a year now, which is what we mostly weigh lambs in and and uh, draft on EID tags. If we had an instance last year uh, where, and that was probably the main reason we bought this auto draft, where we had with Sean our hogget that in lamb hoggets, and we mixed the twins and the singles up. But we obviously had the preg scanning data, so we could put 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 that in the in the machine and and draft off the twins and the singles again. So um, if we didn't have EID tags in there, we would have we wouldn't have been able to uh, separate them again because they were a week or two off landing. So that's probably a, a half a page for that machine in that one year. So um, this is our other handler, which we mostly use for dagging lambs and, and weighing lambs as well um, and yeah, crutching I'll be used before shearing um, yeah, obviously some pretty new sheep yards we put in two years ago um, so the rotary force there on the left where they, they, that's probably the best part of the yards we, we, we think um, we scan, preg scan our ewes through there as well we just take the lead up, lead up out of the tapari out and um, preg scan use there, but yeah, they, they flow unbelievably well through it. Um, uh, what we want to do next, um, we're thinking that well, we'll start fleece weighing our hoggets in micron testing. Um, we haven't dialed straight into it yet because because we're focusing on high fat and high muscle use and early growth. We um, we, we don't want to select for high, high fleece weight use and then cull out our best um, our best uh, um, dual purpose merino sheep with high fat and high muscle levels um, but we'll probably do it and down the track when, we, when we're culling at four and a half or five and a half years old we can we can use that fleece weight data to, to cull them if we want yeah we'll eventually start matching the lands with the mothers to record the pedigree so the, like Michelle said the smart shepherd tags or sensor collars that's a pretty easy way for a commercial producer to record it um, pedigree matchmaker is probably more quite a bit more involved um, setting up you know um, panels and gates and and try to get the sheep to walk through there to a trough or a feeder um, just putting the tags you don't have to, apparently you don't have to use many sets of collars, you can just use, do one mob one day and then take them off and put them on the next mob so you don't have, um, don't have to buy a thousand and thousands or, or um, well people, smart shepherd can come and do it for you I suppose, so that's a good uh, innovation um, and then ultimately we'll have a points ranking system um, uh, for every U on the place so we can go, you know, when we go to colour out U's at four and a half or five and a half go from one to four and a half thousand and uh, and pick what ewes we want to cull um, or if we can't get one of those sort of systems programs we 
have just over dollars per year per per year figure on our use, which we can um, also do. Um, yeah, we think EID tags should be made mandatory in South Australia, like they have in Victoria. Um, there's many benefits, and I probably haven't even touched the surface there, but. Um, Book tracking our lands, we'd like to do with the DEXA machine and the lean meat yield so we can start selecting ewes that are, are producing better quality lambs. Um, yeah, you're obviously collecting useful data on farm and less labour and mistakes when collecting the data, and it's obviously a lot more accurate. Um, and biosecurity is probably just as big as anything on farm. Um, a foot and mouth disease outbreak. There was one. Um, you know, they'd be able to pin, pinpoint where it came from pretty quickly um, and, and control control it from going further. Um, yeah, farm, farm to farm movements. Um, so recording where stock moves from farm to farm. Um, yeah, this is just my last slide, but and these aren't our sheep, but. This per, uh, person did a Nuffield scholarship and uh, she worked out um, kilograms of lamb weaned per ewe and fleece weight on these composite ewes. Uh, I guess that just goes to show the difference or the power of um, what, you, what you can do with EID if you're recording the data and, and yeah, obviously $150 versus $310 for a year. That was um, two or three years ago too, so it could obviously be a lot, a lot greater um, gap between those two figures. So, yeah.